This video is going to be all about trying to build a better rapport or a better bond with your dog and that way your dog might respect you a bit more and it might do things that you're asking it to do or that you're telling it to do or that you want it to do rather than choosing to ignore you or the dog being more in charge than you or seeing himself as high up the pecking order and so thinking well why should I say what mummy and daddy are doing or want me to do I'm the boss I can do what I want so we're going to look at different ways which we can help to improve not necessarily just the bond and the rapport between you and your dog but the way that your dog views you the way or the order that the dog sees you in that pecking order of hierarchy in your ham uh, household family pack or whatever you will now there's not one simple straightforward answer to this it's not one thing that you do it's not i'm not going to teach you a drill to go away and, and practice and practice and practice hey. uh, it's, it's loads and loads and loads of little things m many of which which i've already I've filmed videos about anyway so i'm going to link to those in the comments below and you can you sort of use them to, to reference different videos and learn how to do different things or learn how to understand different things and if you can do all of those or most of those or sort of change some ways that you, you do things, you might have a better chance of, of having a better relationship with your dog, your dog being more interested in being with you. So if you move away, the dog's going to follow you rather than the dog just being all the way over there and not being interested in you. That way, if the dog's interested in being around you, it's going to be more interested in pleasing you. And if it's going to be more interested in pleasing you, it's going to do what you're asking him to do more often, hopefully. That's what we, we want. So how do we do that? Well, think about in human concepts, uh, your boss at work or a supervisor at work or somebody who's really respected and looked up to by other people. Um, that's what you want to be in your dog's eyes. And what think that person that you're thinking of, or your boss or a supervisor or whoever it may be, think what happens when they enter a room or when they're in a building or when they walk past a group of other people. That boss or that person, that supervisor is, is up here in everybody's respect. Everybody sort of puts him up there. He's no different than anybody else. He's no better than anybody else. But we've all got a sort of a subconscious pecking order where we place people. Now, most people would put that boss up there. Look at how those people respond to that boss when he walks in the room, when he walks in the office or when he walks past in the street or wherever it may be. You'll find a lot of behaviour where people will suck up to them and people will, will flock to them and, and can I get you a coffee, can I wipe your bum, can I blow your nose, can I do X, Y and Z, can I suck up to you and, and that's the behaviour which subordinate people tend to do to higher ranking people. Um, that's what we sort of want a dog to do to us, we want a dog to want to come near us and want to make a fuss of us, but what quite often we do, we're the ones that want to go up to the dog, we're the ones that want to approach a dog and make a fuss of the dog. So what message are we sending there based on those human concepts? We're sucking up to the dog. We're saying, what can I get you, boss? Can I get you a cup of coffee? Can I blow your nose? Can I wipe your bum? Can I tie your laces? That's what we're actually, the message that we're re relaying to the dog. We don't want to do that. We want the dog to come and do that to us. Um, and it's the same with dogs in a pack. So you might have, when we say pack, a pack's the sort of the traditional way of looking at dogs in the wild. But if you've got one dog or even two dogs or three dogs, that one dog and your family are a pack and as far as that dog's concerned there is family there is, is is immediate group or pack the dynamics of that if you if you think about how it works in, in canine terms there's always going to be a dog leaving the pack i.e you go into work and there's going to be different dogs entering the pack i.e your children coming in from school or wherever it may be or one dog going out for a walk and another dog um, another dog entering the house or the room or wherever it may be try and apply those principles there that we've just discussed where you get subordinate people and you get high ranking people the subordinate people go groveling to the higher ranking people can I get you a coffee, can I tie your laces, can I wipe your bum, your bum? you want the dog to do that with you every time you enter a room or every time you come into the building or every time the dog comes into the building. But quite often, when we come into a building, so say we've, we've just come home from work and we walk in, the first thing we do is, is go over to the dog and make a fuss of them and start talking to them. And again, we are doing that groveling. 
you don't think you're doing godly. You think you're being nice and polite and, and how we should be and your dog's part of your family and all you're doing is saying hello. But the way the dog sees it is you're groveling to that dog. You're putting him up there on a, on a, on a platter, on a pedestal, saying, you're better than me, let me grovel. What can I do for you? So a way to, to address that, if that's one of the things that you do, is to walk in the room and ignore the dog for two or three or four minutes. No contact, no eye contact, no, no communication whatsoever. Just ignore the dog because that's what the higher ranking people do. That's what your boss does when he walks in the room. He doesn't go groveling around everybody. He just wants to go in and do what he's doing and, and the people come to him. And you want to be the person that the dogs come to. You don't want the dog to be the person that you come to. Um, so when you enter a room or enter a building, just try and give it a few minutes before interacting with the dog, before communicating with the dog. And that way you're saying, you're not up here, I'm up here, I'm important, I don't need to grovel to you. If you want me, you come to me and grovel to me. And that's the way it works in, in, in the wild with dogs. And that's the way, so if I try and do it, and that's the way you try and, you, you can do it to try and build a, a little bit of a better dynamic between you and your, your dog. Um, you can build a better rapport with food. So think about when you're feeding your dog. So some people leave a bowl of food down constantly for the dog on the floor because it's kind or because that's what they say on such and such a website or that's what your dog trainer says or whatever it may be. Again, the message that you're sending to your dog is that he's the boss. He's got an endless supply of food to have whenever he wants. If he's hungry, he can go and help himself. If he's not, he can come away and he's got nothing to worry about because it's always going to be there in his bowl. Nice little label on it saying Fido, we love you and all the rest of it. In doggy terms, again, the dog, the, 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 so the leader dogs should be the providers. The leader dogs coordinate the whole pack to go out and hunt and to go and provide food for all of the other dogs. So by that dog having free access to food 24-7, is putting him up on a pedestal as being the leader. He's the provider. He hasn't got to go and, and work for the food. It's there for him. And so what I would do if, if you do do that, if you do leave food down with, with complete access to the food, is take that away and restrict access to the food and only give the food at certain times on your say-so. And that way you can be the provider. The dog hasn't got free access. He's been given it by his leader. So... Um, if you look past, uh, back at some of my past videos, in all of my meal times with the dogs, I give them the food from my hand. I want them to know with every single mouthful that food's coming from me. I'm the gaffer, I've provided it, I provide things for you, I look after you, I provide safety, I'm your safety net, and I'm your leader. Because that's what leaders do, isn't it? They look after people who can't look after themselves. Um, so, Restrict access to the food, only give the food when you want to, on your terms, and give it from your hand. And that way, as well, the dog's earning the food then. It's not just got sort of a, a better access to it. If you want, if that dog wants to earn the food, it's got to do what you ask it to do. So if you got a bit of food in your hand, you want him to sit, he's got to sit, otherwise he's not going to get the food. And soon he learns, I've got to respect what mum or dad say, I've got to do what they ask me to do, otherwise they won't provide for me. So we, we need to start thinking along lines of, how does it work in, in wild animals? How does it work in the, the pack of a dog? And then relay it to your pack in your household and in your family. Um, so you provide the food, you remove constant access to food, you give the food from hand and make the dog earn it as well. Um, and that way you can, you can transform where once upon a time the dog thought he was the boss because he's provided that food and he's, he's got free access to it, to all of a sudden, I've got mum's the provider here, and I have, I can only get it when I do what she asks me to do. So I better start paying more attention to her because she's going up in my estimations. And that's what we want. And similar with toys, um, if a dog's got free access to toys whenever they want, then they've got the ability or your permission to go and entertain themselves whenever they want. We don't want that. We want the dog to come to you for entertainment. So I was just going to say. I've got my hands on fern now, but watch what happens when I take my hands off her. I'll move my legs so I'm not touching her in any way. And as soon as I take my hand off her, watch what happens. Yeah. 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 She 
comes to me for cuddles because I provide the security, the entertainment, the comfort. And again, if I take my hand, I let her relax as I'm talking and I, when she's not looking, if I stop stroking her, she looks at me and as if to say, come on, please. Um, so I want to be the firm source of entertainment. I don't have toys lying around the place for her to just go away and, and entertain herself and find whatever things she wants to find lying around. If I wanted to have a toy, she has a toy on my say so. And if she has a toy, that is to build a, a bond with us. So we've got a little tug toy which we I tease her with and she, she pulls on it and I pull it back. That's really building a bond and I use that sometimes before training sessions to build a bond. So then when we're doing the training, she's more inclined to do what I ask her to do because we've got a little bit of a better bond that we've just worked on. So she hasn't got access to toys. Um, when she does have access to toys, similar to food, I provide it and it comes from my hand. It's used to build a bond between me and Fern and it's also there as a reward. So if I ask her to sit and she sits, she gets the toy and that way she figures out if I want that, I've got to do what the boss says otherwise I'm never going to get it. And again, that's the way that we want your dogs to start viewing you. So that's food and toys. It's a really simple change or a few changes that you can make and they have really sort of strong consequences or effects in the way that the dog will start changing his opinions of you. Um, also stuff like stroking a dog. Look at pack of, of dogs again. The, the higher up the chain dogs, the boss dogs, everyone likes to call them alpha dogs, the leaders, um, they don't go around the other, the other dogs in the pack groveling up to them and grooming them and rubbing their necks on them and, and kissing their faces and licking them and stuff like that. The subordinate dogs go up to the leader dogs and do that kind of behaviour. But what we do as humans, we follow a dog around and we say, oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. And the dog's bored of that because he's the boss. So he'll go up and walk away. So then you'll follow him around going, come here, come here, there you go, nice. And you think you're just getting a stroke. But what you're saying to that dog is, you are up there in my estimation, you're up there on that pedestal, in that hierarchy ladder, you are at the top. And I'm one of the little puppies new to the pack and I really want to suck up to you. So change that as well. The dog wants a stroke, let him come to you. I don't I never follow these around stroking them. I'll get them to I'll stroke them and then I'll move away and make them come to me. And every time I move away and they come to me, that's reaffirming to them that he's the boss. And if we want something we go to him for it. Um, they, these these guys, we've got some chairs in this room. Um, they're welcome to come and sit on my knee and we'll, we'll have them up on the chairs but only when we say so. They'll sit in front of me and it's only when I go like that or, or tell them to come up that they'll come up to me. So they're getting cuddles but it's on my say so and I make them wait for it and I make them earn it with, with a bit of waiting and you know, sitting and patience and steadiness. Um, so those three things, the food, the toys and the sort of stroking and cuddles are, are really easy changes that you can make with really big strong consequences in the way that the dog looks at you. So another one is just in general, I'm always saying this to my wife, just play hard to get with the dog. She's always chasing this one around, there's a dog here, probably can't see it because it's black. She's always following around saying, oh, are you okay, are you okay? Come she's really moody and, and sort of quiet and she's not that driven to be around her. So my wife chases around and that way she's playing hard to get, not my wife. If my wife played a little bit harder to get, then she'd think, hang on a minute, what's going on? I'm, I usually get strokes from mummy, so she'd go following my wife around, and that way the, 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 the leadership has completely changed on its head, and my wife becomes up there in the dog's estimations, just by playing a little bit hard to get, just by not going around groveling to the dog, in dog's terms it's groveling, and just by not following her around, sucking up to her all the time, um, I always say if she wants to be moody, let her be moody. Same with my wife. My wife wants to be in a mood. Crack on. It's not going to change my day, but my wife shouldn't come back to me. If I went round groveling to my wife, are you okay? What's wrong? What's wrong? And you get the famous nothing, then it's teaching my wife to, to keep doing that behaviour, same as teaching the dog to do that behaviour. If my wife wants to be in a mood, she can crack on all day long, but it ain't going to change my day. And she'll soon enough, soon enough realise that and then, and then snaps out of it pretty soon. So. Don't play. Uh, don't go groveling to your dog. Play hard to get. The dog will soon change its mind and think, "I want a stroke. I'm going to come to him." Um, 
And then there's another one which I filmed the video and I'll put a link to below, but it's what I call doorway etiquette. Uh, now a lot of people have uh, let the dog, they'll open the door and they'll let the dog charge in into another room or out of the house. They'll open the cage and they'll let the dog come charging out. Um, that, the dog then is the boss, he's, he's setting the rules isn't he and he's deciding I'm going to go there and I'm going to go there whenever I say. Um, so what we want to do is we want to be able to open a door and the dog wait there. And it, but you build up to that, a dog sits at the door and it doesn't go out the door until you let him. But more importantly than that, the dog doesn't go out of the door until you've already gone out the door. Because that's what would happen with dogs in the wild. The bosses go first, the, you don't see puppy dogs leading the, the mum and dad where to go. The, the parents lead, the bosses lead, the leaders lead. And that's what we want to become in the, in the dog's eyes, we want to become the leader. So to become a leader, same in, in sort of work life, you've got to act like a leader and stop acting like a subordinate and stop groveling and stop doing these little things that you don't realise you're doing, it's absolutely normal behaviour until you realise, now you do know, just change a few little things like that and you'll soon see the dog's behaviour towards you change, the dog will want to be around you more, the dog will follow you around a little bit more, um, and once you've established that behaviour and that leadership and that hierarchy and, and sort of whose role's who, training will become a little bit easier because when you say to your dog, Rover, come here, where he would have looked up at you and gone, now nah, I'll, I'll sniff this grass, that's for far more entertaining. Rover's gonna go, oh, mummy's calling me, I better go over there because I might not get food later, or I won't get any toys, or she won't stroke me, or whatever it may be. So, get into the dog's mindset, get into the pack dynamics of a dog, get into that sort of um, thought process. Stop groveling, stop sucking up to your dog, stop chasing it around, put yourself up there in the dog's estimations, and uh, from doing that, you're gonna have loads more success, hope hopefully, in training other aspects around dog training and having a dog to live with you a little bit better. Um, so, I'm just gonna try and move from the dog to just to show you that if I move in any way, she'll just follow me around the, around the house. And that's, that's what you guys wanna to, to try and achieve as well. Hello. This is what we get all the time. If I move an inch, she's, she's there following me around. Um, if she gets up and leaves me, what do I do? I play hard to get, I go the opposite way. I don't go chasing her, I don't go groveling up to her, I don't say, oh, what's up with you? I play hard to get. I say, fine, if you want to go that way, I'm going to go that way. You're missing out, and if you want the good things, you come over to me. And, and you've all seen from all the videos, they learn it really quickly. So. Uh, I've probably waffled on as usual for far too long about the same same things, but it's a few really simple things, changes that you can make if you if you're doing those kind of behaviours, which will get in the, in between the dog's ears and make him change his opinion to you. So I hope that helps. I hope if you can do it, then you'll really try and you you really get a lot more respect from your dog. You'll build a better rapport and a better bond. And the dog will really love being around you, and then it'll please you or will be eager to please you a lot more. So that's that one. Thank you for watching me and Fern. Please give us a subscribe, a like, a share and comment below with anything you've got for us.